Okay, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone. Um, a very good afternoon lah dah, you know, to um, Encik Abdul Halim. Yes, we have met. And then Brother Ziyad, and also A.R. Azman, and also all of my colleagues here. Um, okay, this is the story, uh, I won't take long, but there will be a lot of pictures actually. So this is the story of our 21-22 um, Heritage and Contemporary Studies. Um, that we conducted last year <clears throat> and that exhibition that you can uh, see visit uh, in the gallery downstairs um, it is the outcome of long months of um, unsureness ketidakpastian due to the pandemics um, mind you this is a tradition of the kulia because like um for every batch, uh, and especially um, from all the departments except for QS, I think, here, yeah, we all have what we call as heritage and contemporary studies, whereby students will start collecting money from the first year, and then they will plan where they want to go, you know, come up with proposals, yeah. And so each month they will be collecting money up to their third year. So by the third year, there will be enough funds for them to go overseas or abroad or local. So the last time that um, I went for a heritage trip was just before the pandemics. That was with Dr. Nurhaya, which Dr. Nurhaya is not here. There she is. Yeah. So we had the opportunity to go to two places because it was a big batch. So one went to Hanoi. So I went to Hanoi with Dr. Haya, and the other group went to Sarawak. But I think, you know, we had a splendid time, you know, over there and then uh, putting up the exhibitions and things like that. And then came the pandemics, okay. And so the after that, um, Dr. Zumaheran was in charge, yeah, for the last uh, HCS, and everything was put um, virtually. The exhibitions was virtual, so all of the activities of the students were held virtually. And we saw the outcome of it because we are in the creative industry. It is almost impossible to put everything can tell him. New teaching virtually, you know, pegang benda virtually, exhibiting virtually, we give assessments virtually. It was really a stressful life, not just for the students, but also for us, the educators. So when the time came for me and Dr. Raja Intan, who is also the coordinator, also Dr. Fazli. So we decided, we said like, you know, by hook or by crook, we have to have some kind of physical exhibition. So we were given, the lecturers were given the opportunities to choose whether to ask the students to come back for their classes or you know to stay online. We decided from day one, no, we, they have to come back. So regardless, you know, I mean, regardless if whether at the end, everything will be online, we say we must have a physical exhibition. So a physical exhibition, you know, with controlled um, participants that came. So, and then also uh, an online, so it kind of like hybrid. So that was decided earlier on. And I said to Khalif, I remember saying to Khalif, I said, I don't want to repeat what was done last year. I don't want anything like 100% virtual. So that was our challenge. You can do that, Okay, all right. Okay, so <clears throat> with the culture and arts industry, you know, succumbing to the pandemics, you know, um, the National Heritage, I mean, Department JKKN, kan, Jabatan Kebudayaan, Kementerian Kebudayaan um, dan Seni, reported around five, 85 million ringgit loss, yeah, due to the pandemics alone. Next. So um, the COVID-19 also disrupted all of these um, cultural sectors, heritage sectors, in order to aid many industries uh, badly affected during the period of MCOs. You know, Malaysian government um, implemented stimulus packages, but this was after you know long months of inactivity. Next, um, so according to Lawrence Lowe, before the pandemic, Georgetown, for example, uh, was very vib vibrant because of the tourism industry. But as soon as the government announced the first lockdown, everything stopped. The whole conversation in the tourism industry was about survival. You know, many hotels have closed or cut their staff, and some owners have taken the opportunity to resign, redesign their hotels. You know how hotels have closed? How many hotels have closed? And I'm sure like AR Azman can also bear witness 
a lot of designers, architects, you know, contractors, you know, all of them tak ada kerja due to the pandemic. Yeah? Okay, next. Then came this move about digitalization and the government was talking about AI and also the digitalization of arts and culture. Um, Encik Salahuddin Muhammad Saleh, Deputy Director General of Policy and Planning at the National Departments of Culture and Arts, Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture Malaysia, um, informs on how like, you know, the government is planning on different mechanisms to tackle these issues. You know, the, the long months where we were actually unprepared, you know, that we were going to face this kind of complexity in our industry. Next. So according to JKK and you know, they're planning for big data and future policy planning. So cultural mapping and big data are also helping to put Malaysians, Malaysia's arts on the global map. One of JKKN's main aspirations is to build a big data bank, consolidating all information relating to culture and the arts. The National Cultural Map, Salvadi explains, will play a critical role in supporting the country's digitalization journey and ambitions for a world-class digital infrastructure. Okay, so you have all of these, um, you know, people talking about IR4 and then digital economy. I remember when they talk about a digital economy, mostly they were talking about online shopping, then Shopee, you all pun like non-stop lah kan, lecturers pun tiba bunyikan message about things coming, the things you order, you know, what is in your sort of like um, trolleys and whatever, yeah. So we go into months of digital shopping actually, okay. So according to Encik uh, Salahuddin, new technologies can also help protect and preserve traditional practices. Virtual and augmented reality video tutorials can pass on um, virtual and augmented reality video tutorials can pass on traditional practices while a 360 degree viewing can help learners study craftsmanship up close and from all angles. So he believes that digital innovations will help make a realistic, immersive, interactive cultural landscape and virtual reality. Okay, so in I think around October last year, uh, the Prime Minister announced um, the new uh, National Cultural Policy 2021 to replace the one, the Dakin 1992, if I'm not mistaken, which was launched to be used as a guide and reference in planning and the development of the country's arts, culture and heritage sector. Next. Okay, so where do we stand in all of this sort of like backdrop? Yeah, so this is our history. And okay, the exhibition downstairs is called Hikai Al Harpi. Uh, our soon to be Dr. Ziad nicely um, commented to me yesterday the spelling is correct, people. A Alif Lam Ha Rafa, yeah, the pronunciation is wrong because it should be Al Hirafi. Ah, the artisan and craftsman, yeah. Al Harpi means like word lah, kan? Cerita perkataan puruf, kan? So it's hikay al hirafi, the story of the craftsman. So next, yes, <clears throat> from 2019, uh, students started collecting funds. So this was the timeline, yeah. Um, I want to share this, you know, to be a lesson learned for those students who are going to embark on their sort of like cultural and heritage and cultural exhibition later on and also to Dr. Intan whom shared with me you know and they're going to be holding the baton next year okay so in 2020 we started to have progress meetings yeah uh, during the pandemics online almost every week we were having meetings yeah and mind you um I think it was um in the event of MCO3 and there was hope that we may be able to travel. So students prepared uh, paperwork for us to go to Langkawi. Yeah. And actually, uh, and I also insisted that I said, like, you know, if you have your cultural, um, I mean, KCS exhibition, I don't want you to invite other people. Usually we have on the stage, kan, people bring main gamelan, whatever, you know, people from outside to, to perform. I said, I don't want that to happen. I want you to perform because this is your, your show you should perform okay so uh, our brother khalif who was the program manager has already things in his mind madam i have a play called masuri so that was the idea so we are going to go to langkawi and the the show will be about masuri yeah a, a kind of play yeah but then the dean was against it he said what do you, why do you want to go to langkawi 
you know? Are you just going there for visits? You know, he, he cannot see the essence of it. And then he was right in a sense because like things were changing and instructions come to us, like for example, instructions come today, but tomorrow we have to change, you know? So along with those experience, you know, with me, there are like more than six paperwork that the students have prepared. So from Langkawi and then Kelantan, Terengganu, Pahang, Chiang Mai, before that was Lombok. And then like, you know, and we even plan to go to um, Kerry Island and observe the indigenous orang asli Mahmeri punya traditions. And at the end, we said, no, I, we need to decide because like, you know, this is um, beyond our planning. Kita tak boleh nak decide on that, yeah? So we said like, okay, what we decided was that because by then, we have accumulated 40k over of money. Uh, we already have 40,000 over of accumulated fund. So we decided, we said, okay, why not then? Reading the course outline, because lecturers, we have course outline. So for each course, you know, it's quite clear what is the learning objectives and things like that. So we said, okay, why not? We use the weeks in which that we will conduct workshops. If we can conduct face-to-face, -face, we will conduct them to face-to-face, -face, meaning to say either we go to the workshops or the artisans come to us. If we cannot conduct it face-to-face, -face, then we'll conduct it online. So we have that mentality already, so that if anything happens, then we will switch between these two modes. Okay, And so that was the story. Next. All right. So the, the, the study, I mean, the, the visits began. I think uh, the first... Um, Next one, the first um, uh, all right, the first um place that we visited was not the masjid ni, tapi tak apa lah. Uh, we will just go. I mean, I'll just uh, narrate the story. So we, I mean, when we went to masjid negara, the people they were very happy. I mean, the imam and they were very happy because we were the first batch that came to visit them. Prior to this, I mean, you know, they have hundreds of visitors every day from Japan and overseas and whatever, you know, but because of the pandemics, no one came. Yeah. So we were the first group that came to visit them. So we were entertained people. You know, serious. I mean, gambar banyak -banyak. And they're like, oh, we're treated like VIPs, you know, we and the students. Yeah. And we also visited uh, Masjid Mizan, Tanko Mizan, Masjid Bersi. And we had um, Pakci Pakci, you know, um, from Abim. Um, becoming volunteers to accompany us and to talk about the technology of the mosque, yeah, and then the architecture and things like that. So we were warmly greeted, you know, by by these people. Next, uh, yes, that's the. I think I'm not too sure. I think it's Imam of the Masjid Negara. Okay, next. All right, and this is Ustaz Iman who, um, you know, uh, briefed the students about the architecture of Masjid Negara and the history of it. Next. And we went to Yaya Sanders. So yes, this is the place that we, we first went. So we went to Yaya Sanders too next year to um, observe in Rehla Nabawiya <coughs> ex ex exhibitions. Gambar dia tak keluar. Okay, lambat. Okay, lambat ke? Okay, this is Rehan. Okay, so uh, um, they had an exhibition on Rehla Nabawiya the history of the prophet so ada rumah nabi and then um there was also like for example you know the uh, the history of the battles for example do you have two things ah, okay and the use of colors and things like that so the idea of um holograms um so the idea was that to give students the feel on how to exhibit the yeah, artifacts later yeah so the techniques on how that can be done wait, wait, next and uh, they did also um the ajat the batik workshops in Jadi Batik in Kuala Lumpur, um, whereby it was just a one day workshop, a few hours. So each of them was given one piece and then it was completed within those two hours, I think. And next. <clears throat> um, so the outcome was what you saw downstairs where you know, they hung up all of their works. I mean, the brothers did marvelous works actually in, in uh, putting the colors and things like that. Um, next. Yes, okay, next. All right, so it end up biasalah dengan this group photos and whatever, tak ada penjarakan langsung, of course. Alhamdulillah, but yeah. But Alhamdulillah, towards the, I mean, the 14 weeks, uh, nobody got sick, to be honest. It was only after that when you got, you got this new variant coming, yeah? Okay, next. <laughs> okay, and then we started our face-to-face uh, -face workshops. There you have our master artisan, yeah? Um, Brother Ziad over there. 
with his father, um, Mr. Abdul Rauf. So there was um, this workshop, I mean, two workshops. One was for calligraphy and the other one for Ajami workshops next. Okay, the thing about this whole exercise is this, I mean, arts, you know, is a creative endeavor, isn't it? In order for you to be creative, you have to use your senses, your sights, your eyes, you know, looking for the details, looking at the colors, looking at the depth of the shadows and the lights. You know, you have to use your touching. You need to be able. Oh, I do. We do not Okay. You need to be able to touch the textures. I was touch Touch the textures, for example. Be able to differentiate, for example, you know, the materials, things like that. You need to be able to be to listen. You know, to sounds, to instructions. So when you, you learn or you study art or crafts or any sort of like creative pursuits, you know, you have to have the disciplines. And most importantly, you have to be guided by your master. Yeah. So I think this was the reason why we wanted um, the face-to-face -face workshops to happen. Because it's good enough. You can learn from the YouTubes, of course. But who's going to evaluate your work, whether it's right or wrong? You know, when you study art, you know, it's all also about adapt, adapt belajar to kena do, kan? Your respect for the materials, your respect for the instructions, your respect for the traditions. Who's going to teach you that? Okay, go ahead. So in this workshop, uh, when making ajami, they have to use uh, this material called nabati. Nabati, what is it? What is nabati? <laughs> The egg yolk, the egg, egg whites, egg, egg yolk, yeah. And um, our students left that that solution for one week, isn't it? So by the time they apply it, bayangkanlah ada bau busuk telok busuk tu. Yeah, very smelly. Could it smell? But okay, this Khalif and Adil was like mixing like, you know, whatever. Yeah, so I mean, all of those experiences, you know, it heightened your senses. And also your respect for the tradition. Yeah, next. Okay. We also have this Malay illumination workshop. Okay, Brother Hafizan, he is, I think, I'm not sure whether there's another person like him in Malaysia, but he's like, you know, a Malay illuminator. The art of Malay illumination is a diminishing art, it's actually truncated. No one is teaching Malay illumination anymore. Okay. So, Alhamdulillah, we got him. Next, yeah, and um, here and he taught students, yeah, this art, you know, on how, like, for example, to trace it, you know, what, uh, how to hold the pens, how to apply the gold leaf, and whatever. So students learn from the masters next step by step, yeah, on how this can be done. So even for the ajami work, okay, we're not trying to find um, a purchaser, brothers yet for that ajami panels that we had downstairs. I mentioned it to one of the our ex uh, lecturer. Dr. Putri Shirin, I said, can you please find someone who can buy this artwork? And then she was saying to me, why do you want to find, uh, why do you want to sell an artwork that belongs to the Syrian Ajami or whatever, you know? Then I said to her, this is like almost 90% students' work. Yeah. And also, if you notice, those motifs are Malay motifs. They are not Arabic motifs. So go down again and go to the Ajami section. And please watch the details of the motifs. It's not Syrian, it's Malays. Because I remember when brother, uh, your father, you know, wanted to get the flowers. Okay, what are the flower Malay motifs? So I had to bring my books to him and then for him to be able to see. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Okay, go on. All right. So it is about tradition and disciplines. Yeah, something that I think our students, you as students, you know, have to learn from the masters. You know, in all of apa tu ilmu tu. Dia ada tradisi dan ada disiplin. Bukan saja ilmu usul fikir ke Islam, apa tu syariah ke hadis ke, even in arts, you need the tradition. Okay, next. So I'm going to show you quickly since I have only what, two minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, some of the works that we have done in the past. So 
despite i think i mean i believe the pandemic should not be a deterrence it should be a challenge and something in in which that we are able to combine within technologies, uh, the traditional methods, and also innovations in order for us to achieve the uh, objectives. These were prior um, pandemics, whereby me as the lecturer has to learn from a master on how to come up with miniature painting. So this is my artwork, people. Yeah. So how to trace and then how to the line works and things like that next, and to come up with that uh, before I can teach my own students. Yeah. Next. Yeah. And because of that, you look, I mean, all of um, AAD courses, uh, when Nche Halim mentioned that, like, you know, for IKN, 70% uh, work based or practical, 30% kind of theory, we are about the same. Kind, yeah. So, meaning to say, like, everything is work based. So, everything is guided in a sense. Then only we let the students to be innovative. So from here, I will show you a, a compilation of collections over the years on how our students, after being taught by their mentor or their masters or invited guests who are good enough in their areas, they come up with beautiful artworks, which I think could not be replaced by digitalization alone. Yeah, I believe that, you know, yes, you can have, I mean, I'm a true believer of digital heritage people. I mean, that is my area of um, research. But when it comes to traditional craftsmanship, it has to be physical somehow. Yeah. So here, this is textile embroidery, whereby our students learn the art of embroidery and then they apply it to, to become lampshades and also uh, cushion covers. Next. Uh, this was the fun, fun project where Dr. Rajabi, yes, now your batch was it? Yes. Yeah. When they were in first year, kind okay. Um, big number of students, and then we came up with this canvas uh, mural painting projects, group work, and we really had fun, fun time during those time. Okay, next one, I'll show you some examples. Studio, two. The graduate for now is doing her postgrad studies with Dr. Rajabi. Next, this is leather art, <coughs> whereby like you know some of the leather are being applied to furniture, and then some are being used you know for um, murals, sort of like a background backdrop, something like that. And down there you have a kind of Kalara, sort of like uh, motifs being applied on cushion covers. Next. Yes, this is me and my daughter Aisha when she was small, but now she's already like about my height already. Um, if you go again, Jalan and Tinkelang towards uh, Wangsa Maju, you will see all of this during uh, PM Najib's time. Okay. I need to go back to see where our fingers, <laughs> our palms were. Okay. Okay. But this is it. I mean, art and creativity is something that we nourish and also we inherit for the future generations. Yeah. And it requires you to be passionate about it. If you want to be romantic, yes, of course. Yeah. But at the same time, also be pragmatic about it. I mean, as much as like if we need economy, yeah, but we also need, for example, the sustenance of identity. Yeah. So because of that, I think art and culture play a big role for us in order for us to validate our existence yeah, in the world today. So I think with that, I thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi